Good morning, women. Welcome to my messy bedroom. I didn't even make my bed. <laughs> I am enjoying my coffee this morning, just really sitting in the vision of the gratitude of this work and this community and the journey that we are on, the wild womb path that we are on. Thank you for being here. It's, it's early, so my son is sleeping in the next room, so you get my kind of sexy morning voice, my, my tired eyes, um, but my full overwhelming heart, and like I feel tears pricking my eyes even, and I'm like, oh my God, um, mm, what a joy it is to be here. What a joy it really is to be here and to be plugged into this realm um, and this vortex with you, and what a gift that is. So today's little like heartfelt drop in feels massive and it feels so freeing and it feels like levity in my body, like peace and relief wash over me. And it's the message of my loves. This path of womb healing, of womb awakening, of healing our trauma, of, of really, um, healing and and exploring and integrating and ending the cycle of and, and breaking the chains of our ancestral trauma, our generational trauma, that the weight of the world that we carry in our womb space and, and the, the pain and, and the suffering on this planet. That journey that we've been called to as wild women who are coming back to the body and back to our sexuality and our sensuality and our pleasure and our magic and, and our power, right? Uh, our power and our alchemy. It doesn't have to be painful. It doesn't have to be a dark night of the soul. It doesn't always have to be ripping apart and breaking and, and, and raw and salt in wounds and, you know, just burying yourself and, and the excavation of everything and the burning it all down. And it doesn't have to always be that way. And I, I, I want to paint us a picture and have us remember how healing our, our pleasure can be how healing our joy can be, how, how healing our presence can be, our, our intimate connections with ourselves and with others, our sex and orgasm, our playing outside with your children and feeling the wind hit your skin and kiss your face, the, the feeling of um, fresh hair and delicious warm coffee in the morning and the candles burning and the way that the, the ambiance and the energy of the room invigorates your soul. What if we remembered that it doesn't always have to be so painful and it's not to bypass the very real dark nights of the soul that are real <laughs> um, or the shadow and the darkness and the pain and the suffering and, and the polarity on this planet of there is sometimes that aspect of healing that brings us into the underworld within, that brings us into the darkest and deepest tissues and nooks and crannies and layers of ourselves to, to be brought to light, right? It's, it's important to remember that death is part of the rebirth process. And where are we addicted to or hooked into or continuing to subscribe to and buy into that that's the only way that we heal? That sounds exhausting to me. That sounds depleting to me. That sounds like I don't have anything left. The world is on fire. How am I supposed to go in and heal my womb? Right? I'm, I'm, tr I'm over here like this. How am I supposed to pause and slow down and feel pleasure? And what if I was, what if I could tell you that your pleasure can be medicine? That that feeling of being safe and held and supported in your own body, rooted down with your feet into the soil and into the core of the earth, that immovable presence so that everything can come through and you can 
dance it out. You can sweat it out. You can orgasm it out. You can cry it out. You can scream it out. You can play it out. That energy wants to move and energy also moves when we're feeling really good. And when we're experiencing pleasure, as if it's like this warm, ooey gooey, sticky honey that's dripping all over your entire body. That, my friends, that can also be healing. And again, it's not to bypass the humanity and, and the very real aspects of healing that are that do exist. I'm not ever, ever, ever just like, let's just orgasm our way through it because that can be dangerous. And how many of us are so exhausted by the constant excavation, the constant reaching, the constant, you know, I've got to dig, I've got to dig, I've got to dig. And I think of it as even like a, a sore or a wound and you're digging to get, to get some of the, the uh, remnants out, right? And, and you're, you're kind of squeezing some of the pus out and there is that, that tenderness and that pain that's there. And it needs to heal. We need to tend to it without continuously digging it open or rubbing salt in it. We need to do that to purify it, to cleanse it. So there is that little bit of sting, but then can we tend to it? Can we place our hand on the wound and, and feel that healing alchemy come through the hands? Can we experience more of our life with more fullness and more awareness and more intention and more devotion, living as ceremony, living as prayer, and watch those wounds begin to heal in real time? We are not just a physical body. We are not just an emotional body. We also have the energetic body. We have this ability to transmute and to alchemize and to, to heal through pleasure and through joy and through beauty and delight and intimacy and community. So I'm going to leave you with that. How are you prioritizing your pleasure? How are you inviting in your pleasure? And will you allow the possibility, if you've never explored this before, the possibility of that being just as healing, if not even more healing at times, than the digging and the excavation and the dark night of the soul? Again, those are important. There is a place and a time for those it is not to bypass when, when, you're, when your spirit, when your womb, when your, your dark feminine is calling you in to explore that. Kali is important. She's there to support us. And love, love can heal all. Love can transmute all. Love is the highest frequency of all. So how can we invite more of that in? How can we increase our capacity to invite more of that in as we explore what it means to heal our feminine, to heal our wounds, to heal our womb, to heal our shadows, to, to heal the pain and the suffering and the heaviness of the planet? Can we do so through our levity? Can we do so through our peace? Can we dream a new dream and pray a new prayer and, and birth a new world from pleasure, from presence, from gratitude, from beauty. Honoring, honoring so fully when those shadows need to come through and there does need to be a little bit more of a tenderness as we descend into the underworld. And don't forget to explore this world within you, within your beautiful body and your beautiful room space through pleasure, creating the safety in the body and inviting your pleasure to come back online. 
through your hip circles and your movement and your dance and your sex and your smile and your laughter. All of this is also medicine. So as we go into homecoming that begins this weekend, we're going to explore that. We're going to reawaken our pleasure. We're going to increase our capacity to be able to heal through pleasure, to be able to welcome in new possibility and an infinite potential for all that you desire and all that's coming alive and all that's coming online within you, awakening this beautiful creative creativity and this limitlessness that lives in your bones, that lives in your pelvis, that lives in that heart portal. It's all coming online. Can we evoke it? Can we stroke that inner fire through our pleasure, through our root system, through our hips, through our movement, my friends? Will you play with me there? Let's explore it. If this is sparking something and pulling something, I invite you to explore homecoming. We start in a week with the spring equinox and we're turning it all back on. The heart is blowing wide open and the fire, the fire and the magic and the aliveness and the pleasure is coming all the way back on. I love you. I believe in you. How will you tap into pleasure today? and the potential of healing and liberation and wholeness that lives within that frequency.